CO2 goes into a super critical phase, um, it actually gets hot, it, you know, 90 degrees around that area, mm -hmm. maybe a little hotter. So it would obviously defrost anything, anything frozen. Mm -hmm. um, so man, I don't know if you could do live resin with, with CO2. But yeah, no, I've heard that too. There's there's companies in California that are claiming they have live products and and they're not, you know, mm -hmm. um, live resin products and and they're not. Yeah. So I'm sure we're gonna see the same thing with live rosin products. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully not. Hopefully, you know, not. hopefully because I think you have a certain number of the the solventless community that are truly dedicated to only smoking solventless. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it be whatever, um, they don't want anything that's not solving this. So misleading somebody, you know, almost all other extracts are made with a solvent. Um, so misleading somebody and telling them that it's not, it's solving this when it's not would be mm -hmm. super fucked up. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, hopefully nobody's doing like that. Like solvent free. <laughs> so, you know, this is a, there's a company fucking... And, you know, that uses that term okay. for their BHO. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always, like, I've always had a beef with it. Because, yeah, you know what? My BHO is solvent-free, too, by the time it gets to you. Mm -hmm. Because we pass fucking state-required residual solvent tests mm -hmm. um, by purging our product. Um, so if your BHO is made right, it should be solvent-free. <sighs> now, the, where where I get like bugged with the term is I think it's a like, it's made to confuse the consumer. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody that prefers solventless is gonna look at something that says solvent free and, and think it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So not, you know, as a chemist, not that I think there's anything fucking wrong with solvents, um, but don't call your BHO solvent free. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's too close to solventless and mm -hmm. for the, the consumer's sake, you know, nobody needs to give a chemistry lesson to the, at the fucking bud tender transaction. Mm -hmm. Just call it what it is. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. It's it's butane hash oil, mm -hmm. and and it's, it should be solvent free mm -hmm. by the time it gets to the consumer, but it's not solventless yeah. in in the fact of how it was made. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, and now we're at like an area in the market where I think people know enough where you can't like you can't really get that by, you know, like people yeah. are going to, the words out there, like on what, how, how things are made and stuff with, with certain types of products. So it's like, you know, you're you might see that, but when you open it, you know, it's not like a, a rosin or something like that. Well, what's fucked up is I've actually seen like kind of the other side of it is, um, I went to a store and I saw this said product solvent free in the fridge with all the rosins where the BHO Everybody else's BHO was outside of the fridge <laughs> with all the BHO. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, fuck, the bud tenders or the owner or whatever mistaked it for rosin. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, why would it have been in the fridge? You know, the only thing that was in the fridge were edibles and rosin. Yeah. Um, so not that you can't put BHO in the fridge, you know, mm -hmm. saving terps is saving terps. But you don't normally see it mm -hmm. stored that way. Yeah. So obviously somebody was fucking misled when they put the BHO in the fridge right next to all the other rods. Yeah. So at the end of the day, man, there's so much, many ways to make money in this industry. Mm -hmm. Just be yourself, be legit, exactly. be truthful. Mm -hmm. You know, it is what it fucking is. Mm -hmm. Like why fake a front? Why, yeah. you know, and you know, back to, you know, what we were talking about a second ago is like the fake live stuff. Like mm -hmm. if it's not live, it's not live. Like just, yeah. you know, either make fucking live products or put out something else. And I, I would, I would like, yeah, if, if it said like, cause I think the transparency, transparency is just key. Like just education across the whole board. And like, if you're going to be using like live terpenes and introducing it with other stuff, like just say it on there, you know, yeah. pe people won't Which mind no it. big deal. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I think they're so worried that like, they're not going to be able to sell their product if they're truthful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People won't fucking mind it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, people aren't going to give a fuck if they like the product. They like the product. Exactly. People buy for a bunch of, bunch of different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I mean, if people like if people like the product, it doesn't matter what it says on it. They're exactly. going to keep going back with it. Mm -hmm. Once you find something that works yeah. for you. Exactly. 
Oh yeah. It's like that strain you find and you're like, fuck, I need more of that strain. Like I want to own, I'm going to keep trying to find that exact strain cause it just works, you know? Well, and uh, <laughs> you know, we were talking about it a little bit ago, but the Terps, mm -hmm. you know, that Terp hunt, that Terp obsession, there are guys that get stuck on a fucking Terp profile. <laughs> and I mean, they either want it to taste like an orange. They want it to taste like garlic. They want it to taste like grapes. Mm -hmm. they, they get caught on, you know, that almost chasing the dragon for, oh, man, I had this one hash, tasted like this once. Or mm -hmm. I had this one strain, you know, this bud that tasted so amazing and, and the effects. And, and usually you'll see, like, when people are turp hunting, they had certain effects mm -hmm. from that turp profile. Yeah. So they'll be like, oh, this gave me the best sleep or this one fucking, you know, made my you know, shoulder pain go away or, you know, something weird, mm -hmm. but they're like, they're stuck on that terp. And so, yeah, you'll see a lot of people's favorite terps are these specific, very, <laughs> you know, one tasting terp. Yeah. Um, you know, I was stuck on the garlic on the GMO terps for a while. Yeah. Um, and you know, there was guys that liked the fruity shit and dude, you gave them a dab of GMO. They're like, yeah, fucking onions bro like, what's, it's not good yeah. and you were like no man and then you tasted the fruity stuff and you're like ah, that's good but it's not giving me that 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 bang you know mm -hmm. and that the funk so. does because that funk will hit you too exactly yeah. exactly so uh welcome to the farm table thank good you good to have you back it feels good to be back i yeah. love the the upgrades that i see you got you made this place look super cool thanks I Thanks. Like yeah, the, now the we're on sign video. Looks really cool right here in the center and the, oh, yeah. the farm table yeah. right here. We had to make it official. Yeah. So um man, I'm super excited to have you. One of the biggest reasons is we just had the hash and headies competition and you got number one. So I think that's uh, you know, congratulations. Thank you. Um Thank and you. you know, as somebody that, you know, by now we're friends and uh you know, I've always supported what you're doing, and it was like really, really cool to to see you win. That was, you know, I, I, we were in the competition as well. You know, full disclosure, Nero was was in the competition, and it was one of those things like we didn't we didn't place, but uh, it was like it was cool seeing you you place, not only place but win, number one. Thank so you. So that was cool, and it was kind of like you know, it would have been cool to win, but it was almost even cooler that that you got it we really appreciate it yeah like, it, was, and it was unbelievable <laughs> well fucking deserved too i i've seen the i've got the the winning um winning sample right here and this is amazing this is amazing it's got <laughs> speaking of terps and the terp hunt it's got those like hard orange orangey gas terps mm -hmm. <laughs> um and amazing texture um Jess will have to get some B-roll on this, but dude, this fucking texture is like sunny side up egg. Um, I don't know if the, the camera can see, but yeah, this is cute B-roll shot. <laughs> yeah, this is great. This is this is really impressive. Thank you. Um, is it a jam on top of a batter? It's yes, yeah, the jam inside. We did like inside a donut. Yeah, yeah, like so we put like a quarter, uh, 0.75 uh, in in the ones that are out. Um, the ones for the competition yeah, were obviously. half grams, of course. But, um, yeah, it's a 0.75 with a 0.25 a jam in the middle. So did you make little eggs for the competition too? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. miniature ones? Miniature ones. Wow. Yeah. That, is, that is amazing. That is true dedication to your craft. Um, and, you. and obviously it, 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 it paid off. Like I said, I've, the Terps, Terps definitely fucking won. But I think the, the presentation... Um, this this is the same. Yeah, this is the same. That's just the cold care. You're welcome to pull out of that yeah. if you want to like keep the keep the egg together. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the sunny side up. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah no, that's like... that's absolutely uh, amazing, dude. Good job. Thank you. So, Thank you um, so let's talk a little bit about the grower who 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 brought that through. Oh, big shout out to Alto. They killed it. Um, you know, I I remember when I was when I was looking at their at their cured flower of the super booth, just like some pictures that they had of it on their social media, and it it looked crazy like it looked super frosty all those platinum colors that and he's like such a fucking nice guy mm -hmm. so <laughs> that so i also you know alto we do business with alto as well um so i know i know alto as, as well as you so it was like i said when you guys won together i was like fuck yeah two good guys you know you guys are local boys new mexico <laughs> yeah. boys um you know you guys are young guys you know 
you know, running your business. And I thought it was really cool to see you guys kill it. Thank you. So yeah. how was the flower? Yo, yo, fire. Yeah. Fire. You know, yeah, Zach is killing it over there. And it's a small crew, you know, so. I forgot he's Zach too. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. the two Zachs. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yep. Zach is on top of it. He's uh, He's been bringing us some different samples, too, of, of the cured material. Yeah. Um, like, um, some purple platinum garlic and like Mac one. Cap Is that where your, your garlic comes from too? The black garlic? Um, not the black, black garlic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not the, the platinum. So we've, we've had like three different garlics. The, the black garlic was the first one. That one was an outdoor run that we did of okay. living soil from lava leaf. Um, and then we did platinum garlic, which was a small indoor batch with growers reserve in town. And then we did a uh, purple. Well, we're currently doing purple platinum garlic with Alto. Oof. So we'll see um, how that one comes out. But yeah, the the, the platinum garlics are are fire. All the garlic strains. Dude, you know? that is so good. <laughs> Hell yeah. Wow. The the super booth, the tangy. So not terps. only do you have those terps coming through, just perfect. Just I mean, as as strong as you can smell them, um, they come through and taste. But the, it's smooth. It's so smooth. So I'm a heavy smoker. So I usually it's usually hard to not cough. Oh, yeah. um, so no, that's solid. Wow. Yeah, no, I can I can see why that one. I'm glad you like For it. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. <clears throat> I did try I tried the I tried the Chimera that was in the competition. The that Chimera was pretty number three. I, I think that got did that get third place? Second place. Second place. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're saying Chimera number three, the strain. Yeah, the the chair, that was like the Fino <clears throat> yeah. on that one. Yeah, yeah. Chimera number three. Yeah. yeah. That one was fire too. Yeah. I tried that one. That one was really good. Um that was slabs and then uh uh Gerald G got the got the other one, uh, the number three. El Chivo, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, and that's that's a classic. Hell yeah. That actually has kind of similar terps. Mm -hmm. It's it's another orangey, citrusy one. Um, so yeah, no, that was that was definitely the the terps that were killing it. Oh yeah, no, you know they did great too. Yeah, no, I I got to see mm -hmm. the Chimera number three as well, and the and the El Chivo. Yeah. They both looked great. Yeah, and and. You know, there there was a lot of great hash, like you yeah. said, and and you know, um, I think the way they did it, like with you know all the all the different judges and the rigs and stuff, it was it was cool to see it like actually happen, <coughs> like right there. Like, it was cool. It was definitely cool. Um, it was kind of ended up looking kind of like a challenge. A lot of those a lot of those guys, I don't think normally dabbed that much on a, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, and who, and who does? You know what I mean? Who who dabs? What I guess it would be twenty five or no. There was 26 samples at a half gram, so that's about 13 grams. It's about a half, fucking half ounce of hash. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's <laughs> not that they were finishing their jars, mm -hmm. but yeah, that, that's a lot of dabs. So I think a lot of guys, you know, they were just challenging to get through all of them. But mm -hmm. dude, with terps like this, like I don't care if this was the first dab I took or the last, like they're going to stand out. You know, and so I think at the end of the day, man, you preserving that and tested decent, 73%. So, I mean, that's, that's good to go and with rosin, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, hell yeah. Have you seen, have you seen any difference since you won? What's, what do you, what do you think the biggest benefit to, to Z Labs has been? Um, since, since the competition? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, it's been busy. Yeah, I, I'd say like you've you know, seen a, you've seen an uptake. I'd say yeah, like a nice. lot of material has been needed to to get ran since yeah. then. Um, uh, we well, we've, yeah, you want to take your stuff to the winner. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that, that's just that's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, good. Yeah, it's been busy for good. sure. Yeah, and and like we it kind of like it it happened like in a weird time just because well I guess the summer is just really busy you know yeah. and like like it's our first year going around so we never really felt the summer going in like we started like in august of last yeah. year so we never really felt the summer rush yeah um but yeah like you know 710 and stuff was we, like a big thing because we it was right after hash and headies and we we're like kind of prepping for that um so we were already you know kind of lot, had a lot going on but then once that happened like it just got kind of crazy so we had to like kind of establish like <coughs> You know, for for some of some, we are we're still a small batch, and and you know we still like put out like you know pretty small drops with like you know exclusive strains and stuff. So we you know we had to put some some strains and stuff we wouldn't have available. How for, many guys for, you guys working with now? How many um, how many people? How so big is your crew? We just hired an extra one from last time, so it's five nice. now. Five now, <laughs> yeah. nice. You went from four to five. Yeah. Good. You know that is the 
scaling your crew up and scaling the operation is one of the hardest things that I that I experienced, you know, as a as a business owner, mm-hmm. um, and in the cannabis industry specifically. Um, you know, you start out a certain size and you can only maintain so much and you're like, okay, this is the work we can put out, you know, mm-hmm. may it be whatever, you know, we can roll a hundred households a day, whatever. But then they keep ordering them and they keep ordering them. And then all of a sudden you're like, fuck, we have to roll five fucking thousand of these. Like <laughs> it's not going to happen for three months. Yeah. And then you have to like make that decision. Like, fuck, I got to bring in fucking two more guys three more mm-hmm. guys one more guy yeah because yeah that hundred a day needs to go to at least 200 300 yeah. you know what i mean and it's so hard getting to that that scale same thing yeah you know equipment you know you're, you're washing you're walk, washing in your single vessels all of a sudden there's fucking two walk-in freezers full of fresh frozen yeah you know what do you do you eventually <laughs> got to get multiple vessels to wash in oh yeah have, multiple people washing Mm -hmm. um and you know scaling up is is always like the hardest fucking thing to do yeah yeah and we're experiencing that like you said needing to get more washing vessels and stuff yeah Yeah, we're we're seeing how that is and and yeah and we're trying to keep it you know how how we do it like with uh with the hand washing vessels so i don't know we're like we're probably gonna get a 65 gallon yeah um to to do hand washing in because i think that'll fit like 33 pounds max But that'll, yeah, that'll probably be the next step for yeah. sure is, is doing that. But um, do you think you'll ever go to, to automated or to a machine? We, so we want to get an Osprey. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. want to get an Osprey um, for. We love, we love the Osprey. I mean, I think it's a great machine. And I've heard great things about yeah. it. Yeah. So, and I, I, you know, we're not like shunned away from it for any reason. Um, you know, we do the hand wash just because the first, we, we always do a 15 minute wash. Yeah. And that 15 minute wash is just for like the really premium heads, like the yep. 90U and the 73 that we're going to separate. And yeah. We might potentially make it for like fresh press or something. Um, that's the only reason. But yeah. uh, for cold care and stuff, uh, the Ospreys work great. Like yeah. I've seen, I've seen great work come out of the yeah. Ospreys for when sure. When you could dial them down to, you know, super super low speed, um, like you said, you can you can do different intervals, different mm-hmm. timed intervals, different different washes. So yeah, it just gets down to the, the the volume. Yeah, you know, you can only do so much volume by hand. <laughs> and and you end up having this sweatshop full of fucking guys, you know, all <laughs> washing over buckets. You know, <laughs> I once saw an operation where they had six guys. They were do, running six washes at a time, oh, and there was there were six dudes, um, and then there was like two helpers running in between them. Um, and then when they'd get tired fucking paddling, the helper would come and he'd go from barrel <laughs> to barrel and it was fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. And, and they were putting out, you know, it was a commercial hash operation in, uh, in Denver and they were putting out a lot of fucking hash, but they, oh, they like refused to go automated. They, mm-hmm. they, they really believed in, you know, a certain level of, of care, you know, washing by hand. Yeah. Um, so I could see it, you know, at the end of the day, you know, You'll unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, a good thing, you'll get to a scale where you just, you have to, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and like I said, you always have your hand washing for super premium, mm-hmm. you know. Somebody brings you something and they're like, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you can still obviously do it that way. Yeah. No, yeah, it's it's good to have that. But, yeah, it's good to have, you have to be able yeah. to scale up always. Yeah. Um, we're we're seeing how that is. And, and um, you know, it's 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 interesting, like you said, because like with the, with the hash holes and stuff, it's, You'll you'll like you'll have to get out a certain amount, but then it's all on the rosin. At at the end of the day, it's how much extract you have to infuse your your product with. And with rosin, you get you get so little sometimes, you know. Well, and that's the same <laughs> thing. Is is what's worth more to you to sell it in a gram or mm-hmm. jam it in a hash hole? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So you have to start saying like, well, fuck, yeah. you know, I don't know if I want to send this premium, you know, whatever to 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 the hash hole. Yeah. You know, I can make more money off of it just gramming it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, no, okay, I didn't, I didn't think about that. Yeah, in, ingredients for the, <laughs> well, and, you, and people don't realize it, but once you start rolling these things with, you know, gram and a half, two grams of weed, fucking half gram of concentrate, whatever, like it adds up, mm-hmm. you know, and all of a sudden you're just piling through pounds of weed and, <laughs> you know, ounces and ounces of extract. So, yeah, yeah no, it, it definitely adds up. We've, uh, we've recently brought on the Fuse line um and oh, we're yeah. we're learning we're we're getting into it and it's it's going really well but yeah the biggest thing is how many can you guys roll a day 
you know, I walk in there and, and their numbers are going up. Yeah. But yeah, we've had to create a department and, you know, put four guys in it. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. those four guys that were doing other stuff in the building are no longer doing that. They're, yeah. they're fucking rolling yeah. all day long. All day. So I'm like, <laughs> fuck, I might need you guys to like go back. I'm going to have to hire some rollers. Some rollers, yeah. <laughs> You know, because it's like, oh, well, this guy also knows how to do this, this, and this yeah. that are important to the company, too. So mm -hmm. balancing your time, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, we got one roller. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and, uh, it's funny because how he, many can they do a day? So he's cranked out about 120 Ooh, before. Ooh, that's yeah. decent for one person. One person. I'm going to have to bag on my crew about that. <laughs> Yeah, he, he he it was a longer day, but uh he put a he put a good amount though. Shout out shout out to Noah on that. He's he's killing it um oh, yeah. on the hash holes and it, it's it's funny cuz he uh he had this vacation like planned for the longest time and we're trying to get these like large orders that we had going out. And um he had to leave to Canada and I was like, "Okay, there's still like 70 that we got to roll." And like I had like very little time the next it was they were due the next morning at 9 a.m so i was like all right so i just cranked through hash holes like oh you all, worked all night all yeah myself just me rolling them but it was you gotta was do fun. what you gotta do yeah no it, it made it made me like because i i was helping rolling it was like it started with just me and noah rolling in the beginning and you know it's just it's just because we have to make sure that they're a certain way and all that you know but um, it's, it's fun. It's a fun process. So what, so you were on the podcast before and we talked about kind of starting off and you know, how you went from working at Chick-fil-A to, <laughs> you know, owning a cannabis manufacturing company. What, what's happened since then? What's, what's the, what's, what's going down? What's the biggest change since we talked last? Well, mainly been in the lab still, you know, working on, on trying to, you know, new, like, you know, I think the hashles just got released back when I came in. So, <laughs> yep. um, so yeah, since then we've, uh, you know, been, been looking for, for more strains, of course, that's, that's fire. Like, like, like we'll run a lot of material, we'll run a lot of material. And out of that material, we kind of have like a system in place with the, with the grows we work with <laughs> on, on like the quality standards that it needs to meet in order for us to package it. Cause everything we run doesn't yeah. always meet those standards. So yeah. Um, it's mainly just been that, like, you know, trying to find the fire and making sure that it's fire. And, um, we made the, we did the mini donuts, like a different size hash hole. So that's what you are. So what on. is the difference? Okay. Cause I've had both now, I think mm -hmm. I'm, so this is one gram 0.25 and then the normal size is two gram and a half gram. It's a 1.5 and a half gram okay. on the full size. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. The okay. minis are, it's a quarter gram of rosin and then a gram of flour. And then, yeah, the full size, it's a full half gram of rosin um, with a with a. And did gram you just and do that for the consumer, just to give the consumer the, the two different options, the mm -hmm. kind of large XL option, um, or small, medium, small, large option? Cool. Yeah, yeah, basically. So we, we released the hash hole um, when we first released it. It was <coughs> kind of kept in mind to be smoked with a couple people, usually. Like, yeah. it's not going to be like, you're not going to sit there and smoke that yourself, usually. I yeah. mean, I would. I Unless do. you're a psycho, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but um, um, you know, sometimes it's a little, it's a little much, and you know, I, I would go home. It would be like I would just go home and I would roll a hash hole, and my I I, I never really weighed the hash hole I would roll. I would just kind of like look at it and eyeball it, but it would, it would be about a quarter <coughs> gram. I wouldn't throw a full half yeah. gram ever. And um, so well, when you roll fucking some concentrate in your fingers, it looks a lot bigger than <laughs> it is, you know, sitting in the jar. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, yeah. a half gram is like. A, pretty huge turd, it's huge you know to put in there yeah 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 so i've felt like exactly about <laughs> yeah. half of that and and then you know i started like let's weigh it and then it would be about a quarter gram and then i was like wow this is like the perfect smoke like at least by yourself because i would get home and usually end up smoking it by myself because you know it's a so it's, it's a lot to to bug everyone every day yeah. and be like hey let's smoke a hash oil again today you know yeah. um but no we did the minis kind of we were actually going to do packs uh we were going to release the minis in two packs and four packs but then we just thought that the, it'd be nice to do singles because it's easy to get a single and stuff well and the fuck we were talking about prices in the beginning you put four of them in there the dispenser would end up charging a fucking mm -hmm. arm and a fucking leg mm -hmm. so be one of those things where you know if you want to move them i think it's smarter to put them in singles in singles definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah not that somebody wouldn't so i'm a big fan of the z labs hash holes most people that know me know that 
that's the one product that I will buy. You know, don't <laughs> I don't often buy my competitors' products, but you're definitely I don't look at you as a competitor. You're definitely a homie, and we we root for you here at Farmers. Thank you. <laughs> um, you're one of the few companies that you know we really stand behind, and you know we've given you shout outs before and stuff. But I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, I buy them. They're good. I buy them. You know yeah. what I mean? And I can yeah just roll my own if I want to. But <laughs> if I'm on the go and you know what I mean? I'm at a spot that I know carries the hash holes, which, which isn't everywhere, but there's a good handful now. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go get one. I go and get them myself, or I have my guys. I'll be like, hey, go get me some of those. And yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. whoever has the, the med card, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I'll have to get you like a, a little gift set of some, of some no, different no, size no, hash no. holes. No, man. I, I like supporting you, bro. I like supporting you, and I, I like buy, buying them. You know Thank what I mean? You. Because I think that that's, you know that's the biggest thing if you support somebody if you have a friend if you have a family member that starts a business you know th the common thing that people do is they're like hey man hook me up i think you should, if you're a good friend you know on the other side of it you should always buy your friend's products mm -hmm. um you know at full fucking price you know whatever price they are mm -hmm. you know what i mean oh, um gosh. i think that is truly supporting you know what i mean Thank you. Thank you for offering, you know, a stack of them. But <laughs> I, I like buying them, you know what I mean? Because I know that that's one more you got to make. Yeah. You know what I mean? We appreciate so, it. We appreciate so. it. Thank you. No, it's it's uh, it's what we love doing. And, yeah. and no, it's it's fun seeing how the community is like that, like at, at Hash and Hetty's, you know, that kind of it was cool to see everyone like brought together like that, like smoking hash and stuff. And, and so yeah. I, I didn't think, you know, I mean, I didn't realize that the connoisseur group was that big in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when I say connoisseur, I mean, I'm talking about people that really, really know their concentrates and seek and strive to smoke the best possible. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, you know, you can see a lot of times just by the rigs that were on the table in there. But yeah, those guys didn't fuck around. There was some real you know, heady connoisseurs in there. For sure. Oh yeah. Some crazy rigs. <laughs> Which has got to feel even better. Um, because you know, most of those guys are not trying to fucking dry snitch nobody, but most of those guys get stuff from around the country. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hash wise. Mm -hmm. So they, they do know, you know what I mean? What, what good hash is. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you win a competition like that, they're, they're the hash snobs. You know what I mean? Just like a wine snob, you know what I mean? Or somebody like a wine sommelier or whatever. The, um, I, I murdered that one. <laughs> Google it. A wine expert. <laughs> um, you know, you give them some like 99 bananas or some shit and they're going to be like fucking gross. That is not <laughs> consumable. You know what I mean? Exactly. They're going to expect a certain type of, you know, alcohol. Um, it's the same thing with, with I think, hash and there's a certain range of people that are like, fuck me up. You know what I mean? Give me fucking, I've had some people tell me they smoke RSO and I'm like, fuck, I gotta highly recommend you do not smoke RSO. <laughs> but, but some people just don't give a fuck about what they're smoking. Yeah. You know, um, and, and they, they want, you know, we talked about it earlier too. They want the cheapest, mm -hmm. you know, they're the fuck me up crowd, yeah. you know, and they walk <laughs> in, they look, you know, and, and it's the same crowd that buys 99, but not, not the same crowd, but, the same mentality exactly yeah. of the ones that mm -hmm. buy you know 99 bananas or whatever the yeah. cheap shit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they're just going in there to get their fix and they don't care about you know necessarily quality or you know whatever mm -hmm. um and then you have a whole another group of people that would not ever touch that um and wouldn't even get to, they wouldn't touch any of mm -hmm. of the unrefined un fuck even non-live products mm -hmm. um and that's where i think that the the connoisseur market really shines mm -hmm. and that's where they come in and and they tell you what's what's the best tasting yeah what's what's the absolutely smoothest mm -hmm. you know what's what are you gonna hit and not feel like you just took a dab but feel like whatever you know yeah. what i mean and and they those type of people almost like find these gems for us mm -hmm. you know if it wasn't for them and it wasn't for them going out there and you know basically going off about some of these products and being like oh my gosh you gotta try this like da 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 da, da. we wouldn't even know a lot of the times where the terps are or where the best tasting stuff is or where the smoothest stuff is so i 
I've always liked the connoisseur guys. You know, yeah. I've always, you know, yeah, of course, they're, they're critics. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, in a sense. So it's like, oh, fuck, what, <laughs> yeah. what are they going to say? You yeah. know what I mean? You never know if they're going to mm -hmm. like your shit or not. But at the end of the day, if you're making good products, if you got good terps in there, you know, yeah, they'll not only like your shit, but yeah, give you a give you a trophy for it. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy, huh? That thing is more than a fucking trophy. That thing's like that big, huh? It is. It's massive, huh? It's huge. Yeah, it's a it's it's like three. Um, so they carved out the state of New Mexico um, it, by three pieces of like three two by fours like, yeah. carved and, and like, you know, they did this really nice finish all over it, like this nice glossy finish. And then they engraved like Hash and Heddies and then our name and then like the first That's place so in the strain cool. that won. And then um, I, I wish I would have brought it if it wasn't yeah. so big. You it's know? heavy and massive. Yeah. yeah. It's like you hang it on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Nice. You yeah. got it hung up? Uh, so we're, yeah, we're like looking for the spot because we just rearranged <laughs> our whole lab. So yeah. Yeah, we're about to hang anchor it up. that fucker in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably yeah. like above the press station, just because yeah. like it's our first award, so probably there. Yeah. Um, but well, but, yeah. <laughs> so first award ever mm -hmm. as a company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first one, first so, one we ventured to. So how does that feel? It's it's crazy. It's a, it's it's unbelievable because I mean, like it's it's your first time ever entering yeah. you, so you don't really know what to expect or anything. And we, we that's exactly how we went into it, not really knowing how it was gonna go or what, what to expect. Like when we got there, we brought like our table and like our our whole like pop up, like as if yeah. we were gonna be like at a dispensary. And nobody gave a fuck. And the, yeah, they were we just were like, smoking. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny. They're like, who's that guy? Yeah. Fucking keep smoking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I swear, like, no one even came because they were all at their tables and like no one even had time to like Dude, come. No one barely looked up. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was crazy that I got to put, um, you know, it was a, it was a rough room. It was hot as fuck in there. We stopped by for a little bit. Um, but the smell of alcohol. So everybody had their ISO stations mm -hmm. and there was such a strong fucking like alcohol fume in there yeah. that I was like, fuck man. I was like, I was getting a headache, dude. I was yeah. like, oh man, this is intense in here, bro. Cause everybody was Oh, you know, terp slurpers. Yeah, terp slurpers <laughs> straight in the fucking ISO. Yeah. No, it was cool. It was cool. I'm glad it went down. I'm glad I'm glad I got to show up and, and check it out. Um we didn't judge or anything, but we just came by for the vibe. Um but yeah, I, I saw some cool guys, some cool judges from the community um that I agree with were were, you know, connoisseurs. Uh -huh. Um and I think it was a very fair competition. I looked at the the strains on there, I looked at the washers on there, and, you know, they were, you know, good, good material, you know, mm -hmm. and good quality companies. There was, you know, a lot of good companies in there that, that take their time and really try to produce a good, clean product, mm -hmm. um, which is fucking hard yeah. from, from finding the flower, mm -hmm. number one, that's the hardest thing, is just finding the the flower plug, you know what I mean? The producer that mm -hmm. A, grows washers, mm -hmm. which is, you know, whole nother, we'll go back to that. But, you know, and B, knows how to harvest at the right time. Mm -hmm. And then C, is willing to give up some of their best material f to fucking get washed. You know, most of these places, their best material goes to the shelf. You know, they, in their mind or in their rubric, they can make the most money off of, you know, flour, mm -hmm. you know, jarred flour. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot of times it's hard to get these guys to come off, you know, enough material to make it worth everybody's while. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Cause usually it, I mean, like you said, sometimes you'll run something and you know, it'll yield below 2% and you yeah. won't get a whole lot, but. So, yeah. <laughs> so that goes back to the washer thing, um, mm -hmm. which most, I have to say most most growers don't understand. We've mm -hmm. been seeing a big gap in in you know what growers understand as washers. Um, have you been having a hard time finding good washers? So we have washed non washers like for four, sure, like four plus mm -hmm. percent. You know, that's, yeah, that's I guess where a good washer. I don't know. I don't know what your number is. Three percent, mm -hmm. three plus percent. Yeah, but um, I know we've had fucking hell with. <laughs> And it's and it's because as a as a manufacturer we don't really tell them mm -hmm. what we want to. I mean, we if we have the option we tell them what <laughs> we want, but usually it's what they have available. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, we have this beautiful fresh frozen. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And you look at it and you're like, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. If it's already frozen, it's even harder. But yeah. you know, if, if you can get it, if you can get a loop on it and you can check it like mm-hmm. on the vine and yeah. stuff, um, you sometimes can tell. But mm-hmm. and hopefully you can you can talk to them before they like vacuum seal it or something. Exactly, <laughs> and get those fucking. So that's the thing, you know. It's got to have the loose heads. It's got to mm-hmm. have the, you know, big old bulbous heads with that, you know, little brittle neck, little mm-hmm. brittle long neck. Oh yeah, and and the actual resin glands and and the way they grow are a certain style, yeah, a certain uh, characteristic. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't have that, you don't get shit. Yeah, you know, I've, I've told you earlier we we did a wash. We washed uh, Super Lemon Haze. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, uh, you know, from what I know, I haven't washed much haze, but from what I've heard, haze doesn't wash well. Mm-hmm. So we washed it, and we washed a good amount of it. And my guy comes up to me, and I'm like, what'd you, you know, cures it out. I'm like, what'd you get? And he's like, oh, like 40 some grams. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. From all that? Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah. So, you know, we do a deal at Farmers where we, we re extract. Um, our wash material and mm-hmm. offer the client um, ethanol extract or distillate mm-hmm. you know, at the end of it. Nice. And that same material, after it was washed, dried out, and re-extracted with ethanol, produced 1,100 grams of distillate. Damn. And so, <laughs> like, we were like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, the water, the ice water extraction didn't get shit. It left 1,100 grams of viable resin mm-hmm. inside the plant. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, not a good washer. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, I didn't get to look at it and really examine it before we wash it. but And so I couldn't tell you, like, what characteristics it had, but mm-hmm. I'm guessing it wasn't the fucking right ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and and look is definitely a huge part, like trying to find those heads, like you said. But we, we've we been seeing like, because we, we've even ran strains where we like looked at it and people like, people like sent it to us because they were like so sure that it was going to wash Oh, I well. love that. Everybody, yeah. it's, it's a washer. Yeah. <laughs> they like, they like send me pictures and like, you know, it just looks like a frosty, a frosty yeah. plant for sure. And I'm like, yeah, hopefully it does. And, you know, we've washed it and it's, you know, average or nothing nothing crazy and i'm like well those trichome heads fell off but there's a lot of stocks on there still you know like that it just kind of it's all dependent on on the strain for sure but what we we've been doing the jar tests i don't know like we'll we'll go and do like 10 grams um that that's helped us like the most kind of ballpark (laughs) it um like see that's such a subjective test because it's not going to tell you like what it's going to yield Mm -hmm. it just basically gives you that rough okay it dropped something (laughs) <laughs> or it really didn't drop much at all. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so, mm-hmm. and if you're not comparing it to something that you know the numbers on, you have no idea what exactly. it's gonna be. Yeah. If you have a if you have a, a baseline, if you have kind of a standard there mm-hmm. of a good washer, yeah, that would be the best way to compare yeah. a jar test. Yeah, we tried like we because with the black garlic, we did a jar test like originally to like next to a few strains, and we knew like the exact numbers on that one. So that's kind of like how we tried to ballpark it. So it kind of helped us from going like too low on the numbers. So we wouldn't go less than like what's three the usually. best yield you've seen. Ooh, the best yield? Oh, the best washer so far. The best washer so far. Well, the super booth was was up there for sure. Um, it was like four point two percent or something yeah. like that. I, I got to double check, but it it was in the fours for sure. Um, the best best washer. Oh, I'm trying to remember because there's been so much. It's been it's been a busy a busy year. I think um, <laughs> the best we've seen, I think, was GMO. The GMO. I think that. It was a true GMO, and it was like high fours. Mm -hmm. It was like 4.8. It wasn't quite five, but it was like... (sighs) But I don't think... I'll have to to ask Kyle, but Mm -hmm. I don't think we've broken five on anything. Yeah. That's like un-fucking heard of. Yeah. No, this super booth is probably one of the best. (laughs) Um, I... I think the sour diesel Cushman's was because we did two different phenos of that one, and yeah. the last pheno was like four point two. It was, it was pretty good. It dumped good. Um, but the first first wash of the sour diesel, which was like the one that made us really want to start working with that, and they kept bringing it to us, um, it was like four point nine percent. And that's like, <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah, it was, huge. It was a lot. It was a lot. That's huge. <laughs> no, man, I, I see a lot of guys, you know, talking about one percenters, and I just. God, the juice is not worth the sweet, the squeeze at that mm-hmm. point. You no, know what no. I mean? It's yeah. so disappointing to get those. Mm-hmm. And I'm really hoping that the growers, you know, as a, you know, 
as a group kind of evolved to to growing more hash based plants Mm -hmm. you know um and that's going to take them figuring out the genetics you know figuring out Mm -hmm. what what produces those characteristics which allow us to to wash them yeah you know and i and i've seen a lot a lot of them talk to us and ask us like on our track record what we think wash as well and like i've had even some ask us like what we know wash as well yeah, and they'll to go, try to grow yeah and they'll go get cuts and that's that. huge mm-hmm. and that's huge and that's that's where this community coming together giving a fuck communicating we can really create a better better market yeah you know what i mean a better a market that's geared towards quality yeah exactly it's not just you know grow the fucking biggest bullshit you can grow, but it's, you know, grow this for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and yeah. I think that the whole weed should taste good, you know, concept will really come back into play as the market matures mm-hmm. and as the, the competition matures. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, no, I, I love seeing the culture evolve to to where, you know, people are really caring about the Terps and stuff and like, you know, and, and people that originally wouldn't and that might have, you know, bought weed on the budget side are starting to step their foot into those territories of, you know, maybe infused products or, or something like that. And then they're starting to say like, oh, OK, this is this is worth that that uh, that upgrade, you know. So I, I've seen that that, you know, so far I've, I've been noticing. It's people. almost better for them to try the lower grade stuff first because they can appreciate the like premium stuff that much <laughs> that much better exactly yeah you know if you go from from only smoking bottom shelf you know name it whatever carts pre-rolls fucking bud yeah. whatever concentrates and then you go and try something live mm-hmm. you know or you know live rosin live resin um or you know something not distillate based or something you know what i mean it, it just opens up like a whole new world world of flavor and effects. And, yeah. you know, you start deciding like that's how you want to medicate. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want to just medicate with THC, you know, back to the, you know, 99 bananas. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't want to just fuck me up. I mm-hmm. want to like feel it and like feel good about it and have a good taste in my mouth. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Maybe I want this effect from it. Maybe I want to, you know, feel real creative. Or maybe I want to, you know, fucking zone out on a movie and, you know, couch lock. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So you start to seek those different feelings, which Mm. oftentimes come with a certain profile. Um, And you can't get that in, you know, a whatever bottom shelf. You know, Mm. very, very, very few and far between, can you? Um, And so it's almost better that I think the consumer does try the the lesser um to in a sense build a taste for you know the good shit exactly yeah yeah for sure yeah it's good to good to get your foot in there and and you know we're trying to to do what we can to you know like with with the the new product that we're about to release uh it's a it's a pre-roll that we're going to be dropping um that's infused with with full melt okay Um, so it's not a crazy ratio where it's going to be like a crazy amount of full melt but I, th- I think we're gonna narrow down on like 60 percent flour and 40 percent full melt oh wow um, we're, we've tried like the 50 50 and it's it's it works it smokes it's just a fuck so <laughs> oh i think it's oleum but an out-of-state company does something a little uh, similar with sugar bho and they actually take sugar and flour and they kind of homogenize them mm-hmm. and and you know um we i saw a company doing 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 it with keith Mm -hmm. um out in cali too um but yeah there's there's a sweet spot i'm sure nice that'd be huge what did they call i think they called them the bho ones i saw were sugar cones nice um Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. Name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something, something pretty basic. No, yeah. we, we, I think we're going to, we, we were looking and trying different names. I think uh, we pretty, we narrowed down. We already kind of got the packaging. So they're going to yeah. be called melt rolls. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Melt rolls and um, probably do singles and then packs of them. Cause we'll, yeah. that, that'll be more of a, have you done the R and D on them? Do we, they, they mm-hmm. burn good. They do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They burn. I perfect. thought so when you said the percentage that worked or not, mm-hmm. I was like, that, yeah. so, that sounds like information from a man that, <laughs> that tried this. Yeah. Yeah. We were, I remember it was a great day. So too high it. and they get gloopy or what? 
it's burns so slow too okay. and and i think it really doesn't like clump up but you just don't get that hit like you do on the 60 40 like it's not as airy i think it's just a little how's bit. the burn as far as you know the hardest thing when when producing a hash hole is to mm. get an even burn mm. um you don't want it to run yeah. um or any rolled apparatus any joint mm -hmm. any roll you don't want it to run mm -hmm. um you do really well on these um how does how do those burn the one the new ones so with those we tried a couple different options and at first we were gonna try doing like a like a rolling like 50 at a time like get, like they're gonna be cones and we we're gonna do the ratio where 50 rolled like right at once almost <laughs> and um it uh it's not the move to do that because you will have a joint every now and then that will run. Um, yeah. We're going to do it exactly like we do the hash holes one at a time. And um, it's all going it, to, it is going to be a packed cone. So that's yeah. going to be our only product that's not <coughs> rolled by okay. hand. It's, it's going to be a packed cone. But you're cone. homogenizing the, the sift or the full melt mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and weed. And, and so, we'll make sure it's all yeah. done singularly by <coughs> hand and to yeah. make sure that it's, because I think with those pockets, you, you have to really like, fill that joint out and make sure that it's like that paper's tight with the weed yeah and if it's not in certain areas that's where you'll get one there's definitely an art to to the cones mm -hmm. um <coughs> there's a few companies out there that have mastered it but there's definitely an art mm -hmm. to the cones for sure yeah yeah so th that, that'll be nice that, that's kind of like our, our main idea with that is to get people in, in the door <coughs> with uh with trying full mount and hash and like kind of seeing the taste there and stuff because you'll still get like a lot of good flavor profiles with full mount yeah, mixed with flour um, of course that you know yeah no heat touch you know <laughs> mm -hmm. good shit mm -hmm. that's interesting i'm glad you kind of brought into that um <coughs> or led into that um what do you think about rosin culture in new mexico mm -hmm. um you know and and kind of leading into you know premium hash you know do you think there's a a market out here for the premium hash and kind of the the high dollar stuff mm -hmm. that that you produce mm -hmm. you know i definitely think there is um just like you know you go to to some of these nice steak houses here in town and you know they're not empty and yeah. you know you, you go to some some uh you know some nicer areas where you know you might see some nice shops and stuff and you know there's there's people walking around and they're you know yeah. they're spending they're, they're they're getting getting things that you know are are what they like you know and that's that's what I think it is is all about is um, there is a a, peop, a a group of people and I think it's large I think it's growing that <coughs> will always go for um, what they like at, at any any means you know what I mean so like when you find something like exactly how we were talking about that strain or something when you find something you like I think that there's people that will that will get that like you know <coughs> once you once you find that I think there's people that will that will appreciate it so so much that they you know it's 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 their medicine at the end of the day i mean i i like coming at it from like the the like how the like the medicinal industry was like you know it's it's a medicine that you got to come back to and it helps you on your you know on your day and everything well and and i i think that was a really good really good way to put that um yes there are nice you know high dollar restaurants out here that you see packed on any given night <coughs> um you know we see three hundred thousand dollar supercars you know, going mm -hmm. up and down the highways pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. So even though New Mexico is a poor state, I think there are plenty of people that do have money and do do have the budget, can afford, um, you know, high dollar premium, premium things. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, now obviously the majority of people, you know, are probably economy shoppers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that, we've all seen that and and dealt with that um you know but i think there is a growing group like you're saying that are going after premium products only oh definitely and and <clears throat> even been there like you know everyone starts somewhere like you said and so i think you know there's always going to be that market and you know it's it's just it's just how it is and you, you want to get the best the best thing for the best price always you know what i mean so um that's that's what we also try to do. Like not, nothing we put out is anything crazy. Like yeah. we, we, we try to stay as fair as possible with all the, all the products we put out just cause 
you know, at the end of the day, um, that's really like, like I, I know how it is to buy a gram of rosin and, you know, I know, I know the prices that I would pay and I know yeah. the prices that should be paid. And I think that, you know, we, we're trying to stay as fair as possible and never. Is that the super booth? Yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. You can taste it right away. Yeah. 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 Immediately. Mm -hmm. How cool. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. It's a super booth flower um, <clears throat> with black garlic rosin. Yeah, no, I could taste. I could taste <laughs> right away. That flower has such a sharp, mm -hmm. same exact taste as the rosin. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. That's it's crazy. So that I don't know if I was talking to you about it, but that is the sunburn terps. Was that what I telling you about sunburn? The strain um, sunburn? No, no, I, I, no, I don't think so. So actually, there was right. a okay. What's up, Josh? There was a strain called sunburn that had those same fucking terps. I can't remember. It was an out-of-state company that used to grow it. Maybe Google it. But, uh, yeah, that sunburn had that same, like, oh, strong fucking good terps, dude. Hell, yeah. That's that's good shit, man. Hell, yeah. Yeah, those, those like, grapefruit, orange, yeah. tangy terps are crazy. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's crazy because it's, like, you'll see, I think, there's different waves. You know, like, I think GMO hit a big wave last yeah. year. And then now it's, like, starting to be, like, this tangy, you know, like, yeah. grapefruit wave. And then, you know, that'll probably evolve somewhere. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, it's it's fun. You know, we're always, always you know, having to, to innovate and ride with the culture. And, and you know, it's being a part, part of the culture, you know, just, like, smoking all this rosin and, and these hash holes every day and making sure that, <coughs> that everything we put out is what we would smoke, you know, and you know, R and D like the new techs, like we're the Piatella. I don't know if you've seen, we're, we're about to try that. The, nice. Good. The, the Piatella so that's tech. the big, <laughs> the big talk around the country. Um, and for those that don't know, uh, I, I suggest you look it up. Um, Piatella, you'll have to figure out how to spell it, but, uh, it's, it's a cool, um, type of, of hash. It's a, it's a, it's a basically a, uh, a method of of hash making mm -hmm. where um it's not rosin um it's it's actual you know ice hash and they basically cure it um in a certain way to you know release so much of the terps and and give you this really cool little loaf little <laughs> moist mm -hmm. fucking mini loaf mm -hmm. um and people are supposedly like loving it yeah um i tried something similar back in the day I don't remember if it was called that or not, um, but it was good, and it did. It had it was you know blonde hash that that had you know really good flavor on it, really good consistency. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'd be interested to yeah. to actually do it and see see how the process works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a longer cure, I hear for sure. So it's gonna it's gonna take some time. It's gonna yeah. have to be on something. We're probably gonna try it on the on this strain that we got coming up, maybe like some peanut butter breath or something like that. But um, yeah, coming out of Spain, I think it, it's originating from that, that uncle's farm or, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. They, they like vacuum seal the, the, the hash, you know, the 90 U um, or the 73 U they, they, you know, it's a, it's a select micron for yeah. sure. Um, that's, that's vacuum sealed and cured, uh, yeah. you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting cause it is a, you know, just hash that, that almost appears yeah. like it's rosin, like a cold cure. <laughs> well, and it's <laughs> it's it's being cured in a way that it doesn't oxidize, mm -hmm. um, and so it preserves the essence of those you know monoterps and some of those terps that once they oxidize and degrade, they, they really start to taste mm -hmm. bad or yeah. off putting. You know, just not not favorable. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's cool. That cool. Right yeah. Oxygen is the. Uh, the enemy <laughs> it is um and and usually the enemy of most solvents i guess you know and terps are solvents you know everything has its vapor pressure and boiling its boiling points. point mm -hmm. um and yeah stuff a lot of stuff sublimates uh, or evaporates um into the atmosphere yeah so yeah no definitely uh light um heat and mm -hmm. oxygen are going to be your killers of flavor and taste in cannabis yeah. um it doesn't do too much to the cannabinoids mm -hmm. the cannabinoids stay intact it takes fucking a long time for the cannabinoids to actually degrade mm -hmm. and they just change to other cannabinoids mm -hmm. um but the terpenes no it it can actually be accelerated mm -hmm. by poor storage mm -hmm. by light oxygen and heat mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean you got an open 
barn bag in the sun, yeah. you know, sitting there in the shed at 120 <laughs> fucking degrees, getting the afternoon sun every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's crap in like fucking one month. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. two weeks, you know what I mean? It has mm -hmm. this horrid, almost rancid, bad taste to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anything you can do to freeze in time to stop any of that mm -hmm. is going to give you a completely different taste and flavor over time. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that's why, you know, not even letting it touch the air, like you said, is probably why it's so terpy for sure. It's all, all about, I've, I've even heard terps might even boil <coughs> off, you know, at right above room temperature. Oh yeah. Well, and, 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 you know, there's a big, there's a big talk about, you know, how much terps you use in your water, mm -hmm. you know, when you're, when you're washing, you know, mm -hmm. so many of them, you know, wash off in the water and there's, or basically are diluted and, and carried away in the water. So yeah, we really, we're really honing in on, and we're starting to communicate more as a, as an industry and really honing in on terpene preservation still to this day. Yeah. Um, and, and that method I want to say is an old method. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know if it's something newly coined. I did watch probably the same thing you watched the Jolly Roger thing they did. Uh, is I've that seen what, that one too. Is that yeah. What, yeah. yeah, I've seen that one too. I've, I've seen a, a few. Yeah, on, yeah did, like did a little dive into mm -hmm, it. So yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a technique that I don't know. You yeah, to, I I did I like was really <laughs> digging deep on the on the farm that was out of Spain that they said yeah. it originated from, and yeah, it looked like it went pretty far back and like somewhere in Spain where they're making hash. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It seems like pretty old. I mean, you know, it kind of kind of looks like some of the old different techniques that you know originated with hash. You know, like yeah. the temple balls and stuff like that. Um, kind of like in that same family, it's an older style because yeah. you're still playing. You're not making rosin with it, so um, yeah, I think it's an older technique. But yeah, it's it's fun to see how how things are evolving and and where the culture's headed and and the market and and where where people like. I think that's what it is. It's key. It's just uh, moving with you know all those like the Piatella and you know hash holes and and all that because you know you got to you got to <coughs> smoke it every day. You got to be a part of the culture yeah. to really to really put it out there and. Well, and there's a huge, a huge want for the hash holes. Um, in fact, we started doing BHO infused ones um, recently, and dude, it's just, it's taken off. Oh, yeah. So I think people really like infused products. Mm -hmm. um, they want something. Number one, they're good. They're strong. Mm -hmm. They're you know, after doing a lot of R and D, they're right. definitely my favorite way to consume right now. Oh yeah. Um, especially in a group but yeah i mean Thank they're <coughs> they're sweeping the the market right now yeah. you know it seems like you know distillate pens uh disposables you know specifically um infused you know pre-rolls of sort um and like gummies are like dominating the the rec market out here yeah currently mm -hmm. um but I mean, would you would you say that's accurate? Have you oh, seen yeah. almost oh, yeah. more hash holes sold than like grams? For sure, yeah. Physical grams. For sure, yeah. yeah. And and usually from each batch, because we try to put out the rosin and the hash holes of the same strain. Okay. So usually, and like <coughs> each each batch, like if the hash hole, like the rosin in the hash hole is the same rosin that we put in the gram jar. So that makes sense. So no matter what, because you're putting obviously less in the hash hole than the jars so you're mm -hmm. usually multiplying more yeah. hash holes than yeah okay yeah and and recently like yeah we have seen more orders of of the infused products for sure of the hash holes so you know on on some of the batches of you know like probably like the last two batches we put a little more hash holes but i mean you know i i dab a lot too and i i love dabs yeah. and i know the community does so we we try to do that at the right ratio for sure. Well, and when you're small batch, when you're when you're first starting out, when you're only doing certain size runs, you know, some of these 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 places, you know, don't have that much material or mm -hmm. don't have that much, you know, washable material. Mm -hmm. So you create these like premium batches, like you said. And so yeah, you kind of gotta juggle like what is, you know what I mean, what's more important, mm -hmm. you know, what's gonna yeah. bring you know yeah make people happy and yeah. bring, bring in money and pay the bills yeah no yeah and it's, and it's all craft so like everything like if if we get a batch of rosin and we try it and we we see the flour that we have or certain types of flour that might be on the market 
and we try pairing it and we just don't think it'll work and the it won't work for us as rosin either you know there's there's always other methods and yeah. there's you know we've we've collaborated with people doing edibles and stuff yeah. the gummies are huge for sure well and that's usually you know i don't know if people understand like where usually the term like food grade comes from but mm -hmm. most of the time it's just rosin that didn't like make the cut yeah you know what i mean there's nothing really wrong with it it just mm -hmm. isn't as premium it yeah. doesn't taste as good it doesn't mm -hmm. look as good it you know but it's still the same content you yeah. know what i mean it, yeah. at the end of the day you mm -hmm. know thc wise mm -hmm. and and so yeah it does great for edibles and then it gives the edibles that that rosin taste that i think yeah cannabis taste that i think a lot of people are kind of like starting to like more and more mm -hmm. i think i think it almost gives people a trust like okay there's definitely stuff in here you know yeah. what i mean to where when you make an edible that doesn't have any taste there's always that like oh is this even medicated you yeah know? you I mean, scratch your head it, a little till it smacks <laughs> yeah and then you but, you know you eat too much or yeah. something yeah oh i've yeah. been there <laughs> yeah for sure yeah no i've always been gravitated towards that taste and and those those scents for sure i don't know so why. excited to see the the melts come out when uh when are you gonna release those so we're trying to get that going by early September. Okay. That's like cool. the, the plan on those. We we also got like rosin carts in the work as well. Okay. And that's like... You guys don't have a rosin cart out right now? Not yet. Okay. No, yeah, I yeah. I thought you so guys did. We're working on a 510 thread. Um, cool. We narrowed in on the device. Now we're just getting the packaging down. You um, know, that's a hard one. You got to find the right ohms. You got to find <laughs> the right... You know, so many will taste burnt. Yeah. Because rosin's just a different animal. Oh, yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, going through R and D on on figuring out what we were gonna put our stuff in, yeah, it was really hard, and, and a lot of guys don't realize that is, yeah, you get the wrong power to it, <laughs> mm -hmm. and especially yeah. like you know the ones that aren't trying their products that are just like, order this, <laughs> yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a chance you're gonna get that burn taste if it's yeah. not burning at the proper level oh, for, yeah. for that extract. Yeah, you don't want to do a blinker with a rosin pen. <laughs> yeah. Well, and 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 all the extracts burn different. Yeah. So from distillate mm -hmm. to like sauce, live sauce mm -hmm. to rosin mm -hmm. sauce, like all three of those burn at different temps yeah. best. Yeah. Like burn best are most efficient. Mm -hmm. So like finding the unit that works best. You know, and a lot of guys don't. They don't switch the same <laughs> yeah. same carts used for everything. <laughs> yeah, so. no, definitely. No, that's what that's actually another step that we're about to to really start working on and pushing forward. Because we, you know, we we put the education on our rosin on, on like how to store it and how to dab it. You know, everything low temperatures keep you everything refrigerated and stuff. But um, on our hash holes, you know, it just kind of shows the you know the the size and then the you know it was hand rolled here in Albuquerque with love and you know with ro water and yeah. with crystal infused ro water and you know we want to we, we're actually going to do a little scroll crystal infused so yeah. what, what do you mean by that so yeah that's actually that's a big thing over us <coughs> at, at the lab so we all our water our huge vessel that we that we have our ro water in um we have crystals that we'll alternate throughout the week sometimes okay um and put them in there you know it's a it's a it's a thing that you would use um in a sense so the, the crystals carry met like like different energies and yeah, properties. And so when those crystals are in the water, those those properties and those energies from those crystals are like, in a sense, stored into the water as well. And um, that actually that actually goes on into the hash. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. No, that's, I didn't, I never realized it said that. I've seen on your thread, I've seen some crystals on your thread. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but yeah, okay. Yeah, crystal infused. Yeah, so I mean, everything we do there and everybody there like we we couldn't do it without the good vibrations and so is this is this the the, is this the insignia of the crystals yes yes in the this corner? yes yeah because obviously you don't grow diamonds mm, yeah no. so no yeah yeah that's okay that's the the crystals in there you know we were okay. we got a bunch of different kinds we use amethyst and quartz okay. and um you and know that carries over to to the logo too yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. It's a runoff. Very cool. on it. I never, I never asked you about, you know, what it was about. about so yeah. I'm the glad, crystal I'm infused stuff. You. Yeah. We, we love it. Um, you know, we, we've, I mean, we always carry crystals on our necks yeah. and, you know, crystals in our pockets and stuff where, yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a big thing with, uh, you know, we'll even, you know, cleanse them out and, you know, in the, in different environments and, yeah. you know, like, 
um yeah it's it's just a it's it's a way that we that we do it when we wash it just to to keep the good vibes there for sure cool. you know we always play good music and stuff and we you know anyone we work with we always welcome them to come yeah. you know and check out yeah. the facility and you know see see the the process and okay. you know it's always a so it's it's a, it's a good experience to to see the the wash you know we're always playing some good <laughs> tunes and you know got you all know, the gear on all the lap suits and everything it's interesting that you say that because you know a lot of growers play music for their plants mm -hmm. um and i've you know whatever i've seen you know different things on it and it's 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 beneficial um for the plants and they've they've proven it or whatever so yeah a lot of a lot of growers play music for the mm -hmm. plants um so that's interesting that you take that kind of vibrations uh frequency energy um, you take that stuff seriously and you, and you bring it into, um, your SOPs and, and what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, at your lab. That's, that's cool. Yeah. We, we, we try our best cause yeah, it's definitely reflected in the product. Like it's a, it's an experience that you're putting out there and you know, when you smoke a hash hole, you know, you might be going, you know, somewhere you might be, you know, going to the peak, you might be going on vacation. You don't know. It might be something that. Um, someone's not going to experience again. Um, yeah. So, so we try really hard to a special occasion, like something, something special. Yeah, That's exactly. Cool. Yeah. So we try to make it, you know, worth it in every, every aspect, um, you know, by doing that, it's uh it's fun for sure. Well, guaranteed nobody's, nobody's doing that. So I'm, I'm guessing you're probably one of the first to, to put that out there. Um, so that's, that's cool. Thank that's, you. That's cool as fuck. It's original. Um, I think it's it's smart. I think you got something something cool behind it, um, a reason to why you do it. And yeah, no, there's there's a lot of people that are you know believe in the healing powers of crystals um, and the different vibrations, different energy, different frequency, mm -hmm. um, and the different benefits that you can experience from from crystals. We got I I'm a rock hound. I like you know um gems and rocks and stuff so oh, yeah um we've got a bunch of crystals in our house and uh yeah i i definitely i definitely hope to think they they do some sort of positive other than just just look oh know, yeah no super e cool. they, yeah they've um, even i've even read on some of them you know like they actually have like some medicinal effects yeah yeah it, like it, i said there's a, there's a huge <laughs> following to yeah. like like crystal mm -hmm. crystal medicine or, yeah. or crystal healing yeah um it gets and crazy. so yeah no i'm i'm i don't i don't know you know uh uh if it works or not but yeah <laughs> i definitely i definitely am down for it like yeah. I said, we have we have a ton of uh different crystals in our house yeah. um so no very cool something i didn't i guess i had just overlooked um <laughs> But yeah, it's definitely in your branding. That is super cool. Thank you. I yeah. wonder. I wonder how many people <laughs> actually realize that. I so I don't know. I, I don't know if it even does, on the box does it say crystal infused RO water. I think it might. Oh, it's covered by the by the barcode oh, yeah. right there. Yeah, I think it does. But it's just on. You know, it's almost yeah. like it's small font. So. Yeah. So maybe not, but yeah. you know, we, uh, well, they the, know now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For <laughs> sure. Exactly. Yeah. And on, and on the hash holes, like we're going to be putting like a little script or like a scroll on yeah. like education on like how to smoke it and stuff. And even with the carts too, like you know, that's, how. that's smart. So we're, we're doing some R and D for these like really big, like stogie style, um, blunts, mm -hmm. um, with these custom tips that they're, they're going to be sick. <laughs> um, but it's getting them like, you can't, you can't light a cigar just like you light a cigarette or exactly. whatever, or like you light a joint. Like, mm -hmm there's you know cigar torches <laughs> to like physically just light the end and then yeah you have to basically baby it a little bit till you get it going and burning right mm -hmm. um or you know yeah even a fancy you know good rolled cigar will fucking yeah. run yep um so yeah no it's that instructions are going to be like really important yeah on, yeah especially on anything like bigger or yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, even, even like all the way down to the whole process. Yeah. We're, we're going to put that like, you know, cause even when it's smoked, if you're like training on it or if you're yeah. sticking it out the window or, exactly. you know, it's not going to burn right. And we, we want everyone to have like the right effect the, that we had intend for it. So that's what we're going to start doing like a little script in there that kind of just shows on how to, how to, how to smoke it and how to light it and decrown it and all that. And, yeah. and with the carts too, like he said, cause sometimes, yeah. you know, they're all, they're all different, you know, so you could, you might end up burning one. 
Well, so funny story. I once had a guy um, DM and say that his, I don't even remember if it was distillate or sauce or what it was. But anyways, his cart was black inside. <laughs> and I was like, and tasted like shit. And I was like, okay, you know, and, and I was no idiot. I was like, okay, what, what, what ohms are you hitting it on? And he's like, I don't know. Or what, what wattage are you hitting it on? Like, do you know what kind of battery you're using? Mm -hmm. um, or no, it, it didn't even start like that. It started with what kind of battery are you using? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm using my my mod. <laughs> and I was all like, a like an e sig mod. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And so I was like, well, what? What watts or what ohms are you hitting it on? Dude, and he was at like 50 or some shit. Like his mod like wasn't even able to go like yeah. below that. And oh I was my like, God. I was like, dude, you need to hit that on like five. Oh, yeah. Like five. Like zero five. Yeah. Not five zero. Yeah. And I was like, no fucking shit. It's yeah. black inside, bro. I was like, you fucking smoke yeah. that Looks shit. Looks like a Carta with the yeah. card on top. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck were you thinking? And so, but he was still mad. That's he was crazy. still mad. And, oh and so I like explained to him, like, I think I even found like an e sig chart that like showed the temperatures. And I was like, <laughs> dude, you just hit that at like 900 fucking degrees, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that's, that's a hot dab. Like, you fucking scorched it. <laughs> yeah. And it's everything done. about it. Yeah. All the cotton or whatever that was there. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why it probably turned black. Oh, yeah. yeah. Burnt fucking the wick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, anyways, that's crazy. No, she's like, <laughs> definitely, you got to have education to to how your product's going to be used. Yeah, and if there is something as simple as that, like, yeah, yeah, only use with low wattage, low mm -hmm. ohmage, whatever. Yeah, uh, devices. Sure. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Something like that. It's going to taste like shit if yeah. they have the wrong. Which most stick batteries and most small like pocket batteries. You know they have a low setting and they're mm -hmm. in that realm mm -hmm. yeah but yeah people do what the fuck they want yeah so. exactly yeah and we have a disposable that we might work on like you know they they, they dial them those yeah. ones in sometimes on the right the right temp and stuff so i fought so hard man i was like when i first came into this industry i was like i'm not doing a disposable fuck that yeah. like it's just wasteful and this industry forced me mm -hmm. to do a fucking disposable they mm -hmm. every fucking client asked for it I was watching disposables of other brands just fucking. Yeah. And sure enough, dude, as soon as we did one, as soon as we brought out the go pen, like, I don't know. Fuck, our sales on carts are so low. Like, all we sell is fucking go pens in, yeah. in reference to like oh, carts. Dang. Yeah. Over carts. Like, <laughs> it's probably like 25% carts, 75% go pens for like that realm. It's convenient. And it. As much as I don't want to like send out these batteries fucking into the world mm -hmm. over and over again, like they're just yeah the consumer, yeah. the the average fucking whatever, not even New Mexican American consumer just mm -hmm. doesn't give a fuck about the environment. Like they don't, <laughs> dude. And mm -hmm. like, sorry to hurt feelings, <laughs> but the average consumer, and I'll say it again, does not give a fuck about mm -hmm. the environment. And then yeah. and and you know. It's, much as I wanted to, you know, sit on my high horse and and be like, it's morally, you know, I don't want to do this because, well, and at the time, too, everybody was selling like 0.25 of a gram, like 0.3 <laughs> gram, like half gram, like was the biggest mm -hmm. disposal you, bull you could get like five years ago or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, a few years ago. Like, yeah. and so now like one gram is kind of becoming the standard, which I'm really happy to see so I mean, less gonna, waste for sure you know and at the end of the you know somebody told me you know at the end of the day people are still going to buy batteries just mm -hmm. as much mm -hmm. you know what i mean if there wasn't the disposable and i said well yeah but you know you can use so many more carts with yeah, a battery on no nope. like that's what <laughs> that's what i mean like you can have the same yeah fucking battery forever yeah you know if, if it's taken care of you yeah. know what i mean yeah exactly so, I, no, I, don't I, I i have the same i don't even know if i have it on me but i have the same battery for sure and i try to take care because i'm like i don't i don't lean towards disposables yeah like on whenever i it's going to be a 510 thread if it's yeah. going to be a cart 
that's only if it's yeah. gonna be like I'm really on the go or something. For I've sure. seen you post farmers cards. Yeah, yeah, for no, sure. for yeah, sure the yeah. sauce cards. Yeah, no, yeah, because that's that's a, a true live yeah. resin cart. Yeah. But the sad part is less and less people are ordering them. Mm -hmm. They're only or I mean they're still ordering. They want the disposables. Sauce. But just they're ordering yeah. the go pen, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it's it's so hard, like you know, obviously it can't stop now, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> we fucking make them. But yeah. there was like you ask any of my guys, like I was like, no, nah, fuck disposables. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I'm not doing it. That's mm -hmm. fucking, you yeah. know. But yeah. the the fucking market like forces mm -hmm. certain trends where you're yeah. like, all right, well I guess I could just sit over here and like not sell my shit or. Yeah. <laughs> fucking give them what they want yeah you know so yeah a lot a lot of people want them for sure and without the convenience oh, of it. a good battery unless you're releasing a battery with the 510 thread or something which we want to do we want to do a custom yeah. battery but but yeah you, you you gotta you know you can't they can't burn you gotta make sure it's all smoked right you know and, and in a sense that's why the disposable might help in, in some ways yeah. for sure um, yeah well and that is that is so so Back to good point, and I've never really thought about it that way. I've truly never thought about it that way. If you're going back to fucking it up with different batteries, like we were talking about, and the different issues of how the temperature is supposed to be smoked at, so mm -hmm. yeah, disposable is going to be set to whatever it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the company dials it into. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that's that's pretty smart. Mm -hmm. So that is that's a pro. That's a pro for disposables, mm -hmm. is it's going to make sure that your client is getting the appropriate temperature hit yeah every single time yeah for sure for sure yeah yeah i know yeah, i mean because i don't know I, I if if there's uh if there was some kind of program to like reuse them recycle yeah. them there there should be but <laughs> <laughs> you know somebody's gonna come out with like the refillable disposable because they're already rechargeable mm -hmm. so they're basically just going to come out with a hybrid. I'm guessing yeah. some company will come out with a hybrid where the mm -hmm. top screws off of it. And the same company will sell like syringes that work with yeah. them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, you can buy the refill packs. Or, mm -hmm. And you could probably do that. Like even on a 510 yeah. thread, you know, the, the, if you, if you constructed like the, the <clears throat> atomizer to withstand a couple different runs, you know? So our 510s are, um, are, you can unscrew the caps. Nice. Um, and they're ref refillable technically. And you have the um, and I've had some some people I know that refill them. Nice. Um, and they, fuck, dude, I've had some people that used them like stupid amounts. Like, I've refilled it fucking twenty times. It still works fine. Yeah. So That's yeah, good. I mean, technically, just like anything, you take care of it. Yeah. You know, and keep the oil on the wick. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. It's, gonna burn and burn and burn yeah so, that's good yeah. yeah yeah so that's that's good at least yeah, yeah for sure and on the sizes because i noticed on the fuses that's pretty cool you're gonna have different sizes right yeah what, what were they so you so got so we went so the whole so fused um we went with the the uh the, i don't know why i'm looking at yours we went with the fucking uh firecracker nice. um so with the tip we actually used lock and load um hollow point glass bullet tips cool. so the tips we're using is a nine millimeter and a uh and a 45 cal so yeah so yeah thank you josh um but yeah this is the 45 45 um, and so that's just the the caliber of the actual tip yeah so the tip is like a small little like it's almost like a micro chillum. Lock and load makes chillums. Yeah. So they made these little bullet tips that through some R and D just hit really well. Um yeah. and didn't get in any shit in your mouth. So yeah. And, and then it has like got, a little hollow point on it. Yeah, correct. Look, I got that's sure cool. I got some right here. <laughs> and the alcohol. Because of course they're really reusable. Nice. Um, just like yours, or just like anybody's glass tip. So yeah. That's the 45. Nice. And then <laughs> They come packaged like bullets. Yeah, yeah. What? they come in bullet cases. And <laughs> that's, that's so the, cool. That's the nine. I I think this is probably the actual diameter of a forty-five, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. I'm sure it's close. Yeah. Um. But but yeah. So the the different sizes. So like the forty-five cal is two grams of flour and a half gram of concentrate, 
And then the nine mil is 1.25 a flower and 2.5 a concentrate. That's cool. 0.25 a concentrate. It's a cool little glass tip too. It almost yeah. looks like a chillum or something. Yeah. So the company makes chillums. Okay. So I'm pretty sure they probably fucking, they probably got like shopped with like, hey, we can make these micro. Yeah. Because they make like ones like this big. <laughs> oh, cool. That's cool. So I'm guessing they just figured out they can use the same technology like for a, a joint tip. Yeah. Um, and they were great. So. That's really cool. Yeah. No, yeah, I like it. I like it. That's cool. And I never, you know, I'm sure it's like, you know, it, probably like 45 millimeters maybe or something like that. No, 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 no. They're like 12. 12 millimeters. Yeah. I think yeah, it's, no. I think it's like 12. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the bigger one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're the same sure. length. They're just fatter, huh? The tip. Yeah. yeah. They're okay, the same cool. length. Nice. They're just, they're just different girth. Nice. Which, this one's going to be a fatty then. Which as you know, if you're, if you've been rolling, you know, the larger the, the, the girth of it, mm -hmm. the more, you like know, weed one. it'll hold per inch. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah this one's so, a 12 millimeter glass tip. Yep, yeah. Yep, nice. Exactly. Um, oh, these are cool. The nine so millimeter ones. They're really cool. And so we also put the nine mils on the, on the fuse woods, on the blunt. Yeah. Um, and those have two grams of flour and then a quarter gram of distillate and a quarter gram of, of keef. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And so it, the, is it the, is the infused blunt, is that a hemp? A hemp yes. Roll? Hemp wrap. Nice. Yeah. You can't do, uh, well, I don't know if people know this or not, but yeah, you can't do tobacco. Yeah. Um, in the, <laughs> in the legal legal side of things yeah for sure for so, sure for, and what don't I, get me wrong i fucking love a blackwood <laughs> blunt you know what i mean i think that one of the best way to smoke a blunt is <laughs> with a natural tobacco leaf so i almost wish they would pass something that says we could mm -hmm. um and i get i get it they don't want to create like a tobacco weed like mixed industry mm -hmm. um because tobacco is regulated itself but i'm pretty sure they could make like a nicotine free mm -hmm. tobacco leaf i mean mm -hmm. I'm, they can extract fucking anything so i'm sure they could probably fucking huh? extract the nicotine <laughs> off of it you know what i mean yeah. and, and make it for flavor anyways um hemp wraps are good don't get me wrong but they just don't have the flavor of of a like a tobacco wrap makes sense yeah but uh yeah, yeah no only thing we can use is hemp everybody's I'd imagine everybody's that's doing blunts are using hemp wraps. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and it was it's the same with caffeine, right? Or no? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can't have it. Have to be like if anything, coffee would have to be like decaf in a sense, or like correct, correct. Um, and don't get me wrong, I don't know if anybody's doing anything like that, mm -hmm. but or even putting like caffeine in their drinks and, mm -hmm. and THC. But yeah, you can't do. It. Yeah, that's what I was understanding from that. No, I don't know how they worded it, but yeah, you can't basically have another drug you can't mix it with another drug yeah um in fact i'm glad you kind of brought that up so a little juiciness um i'm pretty sure like melatonin and uh different stuff like that would also be um illegal under our our regulations mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. i say that fairly loosely um look it up obviously but i'm pretty positive there's quite a few companies doing really? like a sleep version Oh, of their shit with melatonin yeah that's um, crazy. and yeah I, the way <laughs> i interpreted it when i read that shit is yeah you can't do that yeah yeah no i could imagine because it's another drug have, yeah it's yeah a, or, i mean that's i mean crazy. i guess is, is melatonin not classified as a drug i i you know i don't know is it like I don't a know, supplement I don't know. is that the loophole is it like i don't know if melatonin comes i'm pretty, what sure, fucking, I'm pretty sure fucking vitamin c is classified as a drug like yeah <laughs> i like i mean like i don't know maybe uh, it's a vitamin or something certain or. yeah certain substances for sure I'm, I'm not sure but yeah you'd think like i i mean i always thought melatonin was almost like in the same family as like tylenol and stuff almost yeah. well like and, aspirin and, i don't know and melatonin has I, mean, a, I don't i haven't taken much but what well, has <laughs> a you know and not intoxicating but like a, a sedative effect like mm -hmm. it it makes you sleepy yeah um so you know i don't know I, i'm pretty sure that's what they're trying to go away from yeah is i'm pretty sure the regulation was written for like drug reactions yeah um for you sure know, so the same thing like you don't want to mix alcohol with 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 pot mm -hmm. plenty of people do mm -hmm. i you know done it a million times it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> nobody dies usually i mean you know yeah so <laughs> they, but they strongly discard but they, they strongly and then you don't know each individual is gonna have different drug reactions mm -hmm. so when you kind of like unassumingly you know 
or basically the customer is unassuming to what's in these products and mm -hmm. they might accidentally have caffeine and you know cannabis or whatever and they have a a bad drug reaction to the combo that's what i would imagine the why they're trying to back it off yeah um obviously you can use many drugs at once <laughs> you yeah. know I, mean? I mean they prescribe but, them you know so yeah and you know that's strongly on, avoid you know we're, we're trying to you know we're all natural but yeah then that's on the user of course the consumer mm -hmm. but i think they the regulation I mean, is cannabis there. helps for sure yeah the regulation is there to not like unassuming somebody unassumingly you know take something they weren't meaning to or yeah whatever no, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they definitely probably, you know, keep all that in mind. That's good for sure, you know. I mean, and I'm sure <laughs> it gets convoluted with the different agencies. Yeah. You know, you got yeah. a, ATF for tobacco. Um, I don't know who, who governs the other ones. And, yeah, yeah, like the so. USDA for, like, meat and dairy, I think, or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. so they're... Okay, okay, so... Interesting. Okay. Considered an illegal drug in many countries around the world, first world countries. Oh, but you wow. said drug. Yeah, they, they consider it a drug, but it is a hormone. So it's not considered a drug in, in America. Um, it's not approved by the FDA. So. <laughs> okay. So, so I yeah. stick with weed. I, I, <laughs> I stick with I, rosin I, <laughs> and hashels. Thank you, Josh, for, for giving us that factoid. That's so crazy. I'm not bashing anyone, uh, you know, putting it into. Don't get me wrong. We also don't know that. You know, you can't do it. But mm -hmm. right now, the definition that we're seeing um, is it's 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 not a drug. And mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's the loophole if people are smart and have a lawyer and stuff and are, yeah. are putting it out as a product. Yeah, no, I'm I, yeah, you, you, I've seen I mean, other companies out in even other states and stuff. You, you know, I've seen all kinds of different things and I'm sure we'll always yeah. see, you know, different people try different things and <laughs> stuff. But um, I mean, our you know, the goal is mainly just to keep it pure, you know. Well, <laughs> and. And dude, don't get me wrong. Like I could not like live without coffee and cannabis, like at the same time, mm -hmm. like every morning, to to some level. Um, so yeah, do I think that caffeine should be fucking not put with cannabis? Like no, no, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Um, but. No, I mean, it's, I, I, I totally feel you because it's good to, like, you know, on your own time, you know, enjoy yeah. what you enjoy. And, and yeah, like you said, some, some things pair great together. Like, yeah. like you know, it just depends on what you're, what you're doing yeah, and, and the profiles, you know. You know, some, some profiles might mix well with different ones. Like, you know, with a, like if you're, like, on maybe some GMO terps and, like, some really high-end, you know, maybe not. You know, if you're sipping like some really high end whiskey or something, like that, you know, who knows? Dude, I totally get what you're talking about. There's a lot of people that do like uh, dinners, you know what I mean? Like three, cor dinners. three course meal dinners mm -hmm. where they pair, you know, different types of flour, hash, whatever, uh, you know, an extract with different types of food and, I love and, and wine pairings yeah. and all that. Yeah, uh, I love that. That's dope. Yeah, we but yeah, that's that definitely sure. a thing. Yeah. Yeah, we should do something like that. Have so a big old turp, you gotta be careful. turp fest. So I actually the right way. have a friend, and we won't say his name, but he'll know when he when he hears this. He tried to throw a dinner, like a chef dinner, and he had fucking the fed show up at his fucking door. Oh wow! Like and, was it like an infused dinner? Yeah, an oh, infused okay. dinner. Okay. Um, and like they were not fucking around. He got tipped off by, um. Somebody snitched off by mm -hmm. somebody, mm -hmm. and yeah, they were like not happy. Oh, and wow. They told him, like, absolutely not. Yeah. <coughs> like, what if you what? did it so not infused, like just a regular dinner? So you could. Was that the thing because it was infused? Hey. That's scary. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It was scary, though. It was yeah. scary, though. But yeah, he had like a chef fucking hired. Like, this is a true story. Like, he had a chef hired like the whole nine, mm -hmm. I think it was the consumption. Mm -hmm. I think it was, it was basically, it was early on. I want to say rec had just hit. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, they were concerned about consumption. Yeah. Cause, cause he was advertising it, you know, yeah. he wasn't trying to, you know, hide it. It was at a private venue. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it was, they were mostly concerned about consumption and yeah, yeah. They, 
they fucking jumped on his ass. Yeah. Luckily, you know, for him, like he didn't actually, they didn't like raid it because yeah. they went and like warned him basically mm -hmm. and said, if you do this, you're fucked. Damn. Like we will fucking come down hard on you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, he called me, told me what went down. And I was like, really, dude? And he's like, yeah. So yeah be careful be no, careful yeah, throwing for sure. dinners no I, yeah i mean the, I, I i just figure because the consumption lounges they're supposed maybe... so this was before consumption licenses were put out okay. so i will say that mm -hmm. um and they're supposedly supposed to be a special use permit mm -hmm. that there's rumors of um going around town mm -hmm. uh the state so supposedly the ccd allegedly the ccd is going to start or supposed to start considering special use permits mm -hmm. um there's some people fighting it it's I, the, I, for the special use for consumption consumption lodges? okay so like event oh, okay so like basically what you're saying so like oh, okay. if, if you did want to throw an infused dinner or like a, a fest you yeah. know what i mean like not at a consumption lounge then. not at a consumption okay. lounge okay yeah um they're supposed to be doing special use permits where yeah if you follow certain guidelines you know away from children like yada yada makes yada, sense yada. yeah um yeah so we'll see I, no yeah i i was under the standing that like yeah it would be in a consumption in a licensed consumption lounge and none of the food would be like infused it would just be like your regular day at the consumption lounge but then well, i'd imagine now catered. in a consumption lounge you could even infuse the food yeah as long as you followed like certain milligrammage certain mm -hmm. yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. for sure um, yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So as long as like, you know, you were servings were like under whatever the ten milligram or whatever yeah. point for rec. Mm -hmm. If you're serving serving rec clients, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, so like you just go to the lounge and which like those Uber dinners, eat some filet mignon. <laughs> those dinners are not high, mm -hmm. high dose. Mm -hmm. They're like two, three milligrams per like item you know yeah, what i mean usually yeah. because you eat so many items through the like courses of the meal yeah that yeah they don't make them like 50 100 milligrams like they're usually super low yeah makes sense the ones i've seen where they yeah. do like actual dinners no yeah no and that's good that they you know they got to make sure that it's not uh it's not going to just be a thing that people are just going to loosely throw around and you know that especially when you're dealing with food you know you could really get into with with cooked food you know you could really get you know i think everything needs to be very clearly labeled you know like if, if ever you know that was put out into the market but um you know yeah you'd have to be careful yeah. with with hot food for sure because well, you don't know and, you don't know if it's uh, and, if it's infused if you know and you don't know people's like tolerance mm -hmm. you know yeah. you might be able to pack so many hundreds of milligrams a day mm -hmm. but somebody else might not be able to do more than fucking 10 15 milligrams yeah you know what i oh, mean yeah. before they're just mm -hmm. fucked yeah so you know a lot of these people going to these things like yeah you want to really ease into anything oh edible, yeah anything edible yeah yeah everyone's dose is different <sighs> my mom takes like one gummy yeah and i'll take like a few you know under, yeah that's like my 10. that's my wife dude she, yeah. and not even like she's like one gummy or less mm -hmm. like she could honestly be better off like a half a gummy yeah you know so yeah. yeah there's a lot of people with that super low mm -hmm. tolerance range. yeah yeah exactly that uh, and that goes back to the education yeah. you know on, on the whole product that's why you know like the way that it is with the edibles it's it is the way it is you know it's yeah. it's dosed the right way and stuff and yeah and all that you guys just did the <coughs> a, a release of some some new edibles right yeah chocolate factory chocolate nice yeah, yeah okay. they're doing really well we're like trying to scale it up as fast as we can we got a massive amount of orders right out the gate hell know? yeah um that not we should have fucking known by now like we've released a lot of products and like all of a sudden it's like fuck we can't make enough of these yeah um so we're really lucky there yeah it's it's a really good product um it tastes really good it's they're super potent um you know there's some different dosings rec dosings and uh and med dosings for them nice um it's a really wide selection of different flavors there's not like they're so unique in the different we went off the four bases of chocolate mm -hmm. um dark milk white and ruby nice um which is a which is actually a, a way they treat the the original cocoa beans um and it's like a ph um basically washing of these it's proprietary they nice have, um not by us but 
by the the company that makes it. But yeah, yeah. it creates this pink colored chocolate, like naturally. Oh, wow. Like we don't put any like pink in it. Yeah. So it's it's really cool. That's it's cool. got like a like a tart almost taste to it. Um, almost like a fruity taste yeah. um, in the chocolate already. That's just naturally there with the way they treat these these uh, beans. That sounds fire. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's it's really cool. So yeah, yeah. those uh, those four bases along with different flavors for for each. Um, we have peanut butter cups, truffles, and bars. Nice. So. On, on and the peanut butter, it's like peanut butter and jelly something. Right? So one of them. So yeah. so the white chocolate ones are actually peanut butter and jelly. That's cool. Yeah. That's so, cool. <laughs> no, man, and, and the, uh, you know, shout out to the to the lady in the kitchen. She, you know, kills it in there. But when she first, um, Lisa, when she first came to me with the, uh, with, with the R&D stuff, I was like, oh, man, this is the one. Mm -hmm. um, so good. Um, man, even if you don't, I've heard a lot of people say they don't like white chocolate. Um, even if you don't white, like white chocolate, the the taste between the jelly and the peanut butter is just it's fire. Hits. Yeah, so, yeah. We named it peanut butter oh, yeah. and jealous. Um, <laughs> That's cool because we knew that it was it was so good. It's there's gonna be some jealousy. You're gonna be out peanut there. butter and jealous. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like it's good. It's just really really good. Um, and then honestly, all the, all the flavors came out That's really what's dope. Oh yeah. Um, there's a for whatever chocolate you do like, whatever type of chocolate you do prefer, um, everybody's got different tastes. Um, there's there should be one in there. There's to, one for everyone to suit you. Hell yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you guys are killing it. That's Thank you, up. bro. Thank you. Yeah, I like are you guys gonna edibles. do? Are you guys gonna do edibles? Um, so we don't have any plans yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, we are just going all ham on the rosin. Yeah. yeah we're we're trying different consistencies. We're separating the microns. <coughs> Um, in different ways, we're really going hard, like how we did the egg tech, and we're just gonna yeah. like try all kinds of different consistencies, mixing them together. Because yeah. like how we were talking about the terpenes and the different boiling points and stuff, um, it's really key to to bring everything in. And we don't want to like maybe if certain strains complement each other, we might consider doing like a cross. But we would definitely let people know that it was. <coughs> But we want to stick with like the same strain, different consistencies, and yeah. like really bring that into like our drops and stuff. That's really cool. And there's not a lot of companies thinking that way. Um, and Jesh, Jesh is probably only one of the only ones that can contest to this. We originally made a very detailed price list for all these different types of hash and and different types of rosin and different types of solvent lists that we could make. Nice. You know from you know, melt to sift to, you know, six star, five star, like, you know, going down the line, like, you know, all these different things, you know, the jams, the, you know, and, and all kinds of different things. And at the end of the day, we sell like two types of rosin. Mm -hmm. Like nobody wants us to make any type of fucking ice hash. Mm -hmm. Like it seems like, like the, the, it's just not a huge like ask out here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just basically cold cure batter and jam mm -hmm. like those are that's like the two consistencies um true hash true ice water hash mm -hmm. um in in its in its bareness um is not really hit here yet yeah and it's really cool to see somebody going out there and pushing it and starting to bring education because that's all it takes is people mm -hmm. have to try it mm -hmm. you know what i mean store it differently you know? yeah and there's those like old souls that like you know, want, you know, ice hash from back in the day. Yeah. It's, it's um, <laughs> but like refined, like new age ice hash. Is mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, there's definitely it's, a it's community good. for the full melt for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and like I said, there's, there's a, actually quite a few things. Um, like I said, just can contest you after we built our menu, quite a different ways, quite a few different ways that we could prepare the, the different ash. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, people just want batter jam, batter jam, yeah, or carts, yeah, you know, which is <laughs> basically just decarb jam, mm -hmm. you yeah, know what just I mean? decarb so, longer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, you know, and it's and that I really want to see like the the hash community like grow um, and evolve specifically here in New Mexico mm -hmm. um, to start seeing those you know cool old school classic you know unique 
types of bubble hash and different things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's fun. It's you know, it's picky too because each strain you sometimes you'll you'll run it and you won't get like out of all the strains we were because we were just re- like talking about it the other day because we. We want to do melt like whenever we do. That's why we always do a 15 minute wash and yeah. collecting that 90 bag up to the 120 bag. And um, we assess it every time and make sure. And we even, you know, sometimes if we think that it might be, you know, we'll we'll try a little bit, do the flag and see how that yeah. how it look, presses out into a flag and stuff. Um, but yeah, how it melts and everything is and, key. And it's it's hard. It's hard yeah, to find those not a lot super of them. clean, mm-hmm. you know, really even, you know, high star. Fucking yeah. melts. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. So when, when when they're there, we definitely want to showcase them and, and bring them out. It's just, yeah, it's... I love that you guys are going out to that. I think people will kind of develop their, their growth methods and um, really start growing for hash mm-hmm. more um, as a state. And I think we're going to see a lot more um, washers mm-hmm. and hash stains, um, you know, yeah. hit the scene. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's... I love seeing New Mexico pop off like this. You know, it's... it's it's big because you go to all these other states yeah. and you try their hash and yeah, that, you know, there are good hash makers. They're, they're killing it and there's great grows and everything, but I just love to see, you yeah. know, where I'm from killing it. Like, yeah. you know, put in something out like that, that does compete with these other states that are killing it too. Yeah. Like, How many companies were involved in the hash and eddies? Was it like, Oh, there was a 14. I think it was, yeah, it was something, something like that. Like yeah. 14 or 15. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, there was, so, I mean, there was a lot of good hash there. So it shows you that there's a lot of fuckers after it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and yeah, you're going to see that market um, for the better better weed, you know, that mm-hmm. makes the, the hash um, yeah. really pop off. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited. We, we want to like, we're going to do a line of the rosin that's just like the consistencies like that. Yeah. It's just going to be like all kinds of different stuff that oh, we're yeah. going to do. Like we got... But we're going to do a cold cure like sphere with the jam on it where it melts yeah. down it like a globe and it's glossy That's and stuff. That's going to be sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just a few different things, you know, we want to. No, keep innovating. Um, keep putting new shit out there. I think that really defines a company. And keep doing what you're doing. Seems like you guys really care about quality. Like you're going after, you know, you know quality over quantity and really going after those craft batches. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, keeping it, keeping a small crew really taking through and and putting care into what you're doing um and that's that's smart dude and it shows it shows in the product thank you so much you know we we really we couldn't do it without our crew and without the grows like just like you know our crew is small and like you know the the five of us there have you know a different palette and we all assess everything and yeah if it's if it's not like you know if none of us don't like it then we won't we won't put it out for sure and it's a it's a it's a it's a process. Yeah. Like we have to we have to check mark each strain on on a list from one to five and really assess it before we put it out. And and yeah, no big shout out to them. They're killing it every Which is single like day. Nobody's doing that. Just so you know, like there is very few companies that even give a fuck what it puts out. But mm-hmm. there's definitely people not assessing and grading their their fucking final products. Mm-hmm. Um, so no good. Good job there. Thank you. Um, I mean, we do. You're not the only Hell one. Yeah. But Hell yeah. Yeah, we've, we definitely, but very few yeah. companies no, yeah, you could see are your doing, it's clean. Are yeah, doing yeah. any sort of quality control role. Mm-hmm. It's just you, they put it in the machine. What the, You get what yeah. you get. Don't talk shit. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's no, you know, and I think that's there's a certain level of we don't give a fuck, like, you know, that people end up with. But yeah there's just also a certain level of most of these owners and even management don't use the products Mm -hmm. so there's a huge disconnect between like what's good or not yeah like what's good just looks good in the package like cool yeah what looks good is a bunch of units exactly (laughs) yeah (laughs) flying out the door yeah and so a lot of people you know overlook like is it actually good the product going on exactly and people figure it out bro people figure out where the quality is and they continue to shop for that quality Mm -hmm. so yeah good job dude thank you thank you i think you're killing it um i think you got a really bright future in the industry um you know i think yeah super proud of you for winning the competition um i hope that propels you guys um as much as it can and and really puts you guys in in a position to 
spread your stuff all over the state. Thank you. No, it means a lot. I mean, it was cool to see you there and yeah. stuff. And okay. Yeah, no, it's super cool. Like we left like right before. Well, hours I know. Before. I wish. I wish I was earlier. Yeah, uh, yeah. We left like hours before they they actually announced the winner. But yeah, no, it was I, late. <laughs> my guy, I called one of my guys that was that was the that was there, and uh, yeah, he told me he's like, yeah, and he told me you won. I was like, fuck yeah. Hell so, yeah, thank you. Good man. job, man. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for coming down. You want to shout out? Where can people follow you if they're not already following no, you? No, yeah. Z Labs official on okay. Instagram. Um, it's our it's our main one, and then we have the Z Labs NM. That's our backup. But okay. um, yeah, it's just just on Instagram. Usually, um, you know, we're we're in a handful of spots. We're not uh, we're not everywhere, but um, yeah, we're we're in a hand. I just dropped off a bunch of these hash holes today at Dark Matter, so okay. so that's where they can find the the minis right now um, here in town. So. Um, and down there and down south, which and is then, um, so the we're, we're pre record or we're we're not going to release it till it's edited and stuff, so it, it, it's not live. Um, so if if dark matter sold out by the time they yeah, they get there, where's that's true? Where's usually a good place to to find your stuff? Who usually has um, some stuff in stock? Yeah, no, so uh, usually dark matter, Nirvana, uh, Lucent keeps our stuff in stock. Um, P37 always has our hash holes and nice. our rosin. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, P37 consistently too, has... Right? Canvas Yeah, can, Canvas has our yeah. strains. I, I yeah, Canvas, Canvas has our strains. Um, yeah, cool. and, and uh, a variety of different ones. You know, each each one of those places, you know, they, they get a, a variety of different terps and stuff, so... Um, we try to to release, you know, you know what we can, and and you know have those varieties. Roadrunner down in Alamogordo got oh, yeah. the first drop. Shout of, out, Dab Bro. Yes, sir. They got the first drop of the Super Boof. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was a big one. So I I uh, I think a few people did actually he, did he work that deal at the at the event? Yeah, no, he wanted it right away. <laughs> he wanted it right away, like soon after. Did you? So when you when you won, did you have some in wholesale to sell? very limited nice very limited yeah okay. so there's um there's about uh a little over 100 units that were yeah. able to be dispersed throughout nice. the state and yeah super exclusive though. yeah it's super exclusive he's he's going to be growing more of that strain but it's okay. not going to be ran till like <coughs> october yeah. or something like that but um yeah no it's it's a limited run and yeah. i i don't know you know i i i don't know if they still have it but i know we we had it in hash holes too we had the flower paired with the super booth rosin in hash you holes. know what's cool is so i've actually heard of super booth being being popular in a couple different states right now it's the, the strain itself is doing really well oh yeah people obviously see why yeah it's got that super sharp terps too. yeah so and we're up we're up north too in green yeah. fuego we're in Green Fuego's nice. dispensary. Um, you know, uh, we're in uh, Endo and High Class up there. Good job, dude. So, you know, people in Santa Fe can try some. So there some shouldn't nice... be a reason why people can't find you anywhere. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're looking for Z Labs, figure out one of those places he just went to. Go try his stuff. I think you guys will, will really like it. In Farmington, if you're as far Fuck up yeah. as that, get, hit up Lava Leaf for oh, sure. Oh, hell yeah. Yep, yeah, they got it cool man so we're, well, we're trying to trying to you know keep the stay you know smoking good <laughs> hell yeah well i'm super proud of you man keep killing it um thank you for coming on thank you for getting me stoned um like i said i think you got a bright future ahead and uh, keep being you dude thank you thank you so much i really appreciate yeah, yeah, it don thanks for thanks for having me on and it means a lot you know so no problem yeah you're always you know, welcome dude appreciate it